What's going on, people? It's Lex, your rogue philosopher and spiritual instigator. One of the most important questions a philosopher, a spiritual seeker, or anyone looking to independently construct a worldview can ask is, what is the ground of being? What is the nature and essence of reality and existence? Is it ultimately mental, physical, or something else? Some of the best theories, in my opinion anyway, are the ones that posit a single explanation as the fundamental source for all that there is, whether that explanation be physical, ultimately something like pure mass energy, or whether it be non-physical, something like consciousness. I like theories that reduce things down to one or none, mainly because truth should be simple. Truth should simply be that which is. So the more things you add to an explanation, the further removed you become from the truth of the matter. For transparency, I'm partial to the non-physical explanations, especially the ones that champion mind or consciousness. And I also think that naturalism is philosophically and experientially flawed. I like theories that say that consciousness is fundamentally indistinct from all that we experience, but that's not to say that everything is conscious, more to say that everything is in consciousness or everything is consciousness. This is a form of non-dualism, and if conciseness of explanation is important to you, I think this should be a pretty good theory, or at least a theory you should give some consideration. And of course, this is congruent with Hinduism up to a point, and it's also closely adjacent to some Buddhist notions, but really only in the sense that we aren't what we experience life as. So what exactly is this theory saying? Well, essentially, if you posit mind or consciousness as the ground of being, then all happenings, all experiences, and really all material things are nothing but a process or happening of that mind or consciousness. This notion can be spiritual if you look at it that way. I think it can be strengthening in a spiritual sense because it directly implies that we and everything that is reduces down to one fundamental, essential, and identical substance. It wouldn't be unfair or even inaccurate to replace the word consciousness or mind with the word God, just as long as we refrain from layering any religious connotation upon this theory. I think this theory is anti-religious only in the sense that it doesn't require faith or belief to see it. It's what I call intellectual spirituality. This theory isn't directly linked to hard science, but it does run parallel to it. So you would think that experimentation should be plausible or possible. And I call it intellectual spirituality because anyone that can still their mind, anyone that can meditate can see that the phenomena that is consciousness is highly worthy of investigation. It, doesn't require faith. We can also see that the reductionist approach to science, especially physics, trends toward more and more simple explanations for this reality. Things are reduced from bodies to cells, to molecules, to atoms, to particles, to fields of energy, to ultimately space time. Whether you follow your direct experience or objective physical breadcrumbs, things seem to be reducing down to one or none, which is why I say that zero factorial is significant beyond math. Either way, we should at least consider or at least think about checking our notions of isolated, distinct, and individuated selves, even if we don't abandon them. But if everything is sourced from one thing, how do we get individuation? How do we get the experience of being separate selves is really what any thinking person should be asking at this point. If we're all fundamentally one and the same, if we're all consciousness, then why do we seem to have separate conscious experiences and identities? Well, according to former CERN computer scientist and philosopher Bernardo Kastrup, we do have a mechanism explaining this. In his mind at large theory, or simply MAL, the experience of you as whatever your name is or whatever you believe yourself to be is identical to the experience a person has with multiple personality or disassociative personality disorder. And that may seem like a stretch, but here's how I would envision this concept if I was trying to wrap my mind around it. I think of mind at large or consciousness as a pot of water. Without disassociation, there would be no experience of a thing, let alone a you there would be no boiling. By some mental perturbation, energy is injected causing disassociation to occur, and hence, the experience of us and everything we see is realized. We in this universe are like a bubble in a pot of boiling water, fundamentally the same, just momentarily distinct with some added degree of freedom. Of course, the existence of the individuated disassociated bubble is completely dependent upon the pot of water, but without enough perspective, this may not be evident. From the perspective of the bubble, it's just one of many in some cylindrical realm. Yes, it may agree that there are some similarities between it and other bubbles, but it would be hard pressed to not see itself as we typically see ourselves, as absolutely individual. This is a really good theory in my opinion, not only because it holds the potential to help us make some headway and come into an agreement on the nature of us, but also because there are correlates to this universal consciousness or mind at large in our own minds. As above, 
so below, in a sense. When a person has a disassociative personality disorder, there can be multiple identities, personalities, and potentially even experiences within the same realm, the same body. And you might ask, what does the human mind and its happenings have to do with the universe at large? And that's a great question, a question that everyone should ask. But we could also ask, what does a flea have to do with a star? And at first glance, you would say nothing, but they do at the deepest level, they're composed of identical matter. Although we are projecting a local phenomena onto the entire universe, it doesn't mean that we're not onto something. Science does the very same thing when it assumes that a measurement made here would be the same on the other side of the universe or that the constants in the laws of physics that we observe now were the same billions of years ago. We just don't know. These are pretty big assumptions, but I think they're essential for piecing a picture together until we achieve either superluminal travel or we can live for a billion years. And I think we shouldn't dismiss this outright. Instead, I think we should ask ourselves, if disassociation is possible for human beings in our minds, why wouldn't it be possible for a grand universal mind or consciousness? And that isn't to say that we're in some being's mind. There may be no being. There may be no awareness, personality, or even intent at that level, at the universal level. The only real problem I have with this theory is the mechanism of causation. What causes the water to boil? In my view, there will be no distinction until there is some disturbance. And in a universal system, in a closed universal system, where is the energy going to come from that will cause this disturbance? Without this disturbance and this perturbation of mind, I think the mind will be uniform. It will be still kind of like a cool pot of water. There will be no distinction. If you're wondering what to call these individual bubbles in Bernardo's theory, he calls them disassociated alters. We are the alters of the grand universal consciousness or mind. And so is everything else, I believe. And that's a high level and probably imperfect telling. But nonetheless, let me know what you think. Do you think this theory has merit? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Are you a materialist or a naturalist? And do you think we're all being silly? Let me know. If I got something wrong or misquoted something, let everyone know in the comments below so that we can all be clear, so that we can all judge this theory accurately and on its own merits. And just remember that I'm presenting this as a topic for thought and discussion. I'm not trying to feed you. I'm just laying down the scent for you to follow. We should all be intellectual hunters, not pets. Anyway, like this video if you like it, and I'll be detailing more about other people's theories and my own on videos in the future about consciousness and reality and more. So subscribe if you want to check those out. Have a great morning, a great day. Don't forget to question everything, and I'll see you on the next one. Later.